dear participants back to the next session and we have amongst us a uh, renowned professor michael watson good morning sir good morning Michael, Professor Michael Watsmith is a world-renowned mathematician whose research has uh, had a profound impact on number theory. He is considered the father of great French school of transcendental number theory, and he has got at least 65 scientific descendants and is known to be an exceptional teacher. Professor Michael Watsmith is an emeritus professor at University Perry at Marie Curie, where he taught for nearly 40 years. This exceptional teacher makes the most complex topics seem clear and understandable. And he, his uh, students to explore these areas in even greater depth. Many travel from far away to take his courses in the latest avenues of research and professor regularly he is the invited professor to teach courses in asia the middle east and africa time as president of the society mathematica de france france premier mathematical organization professor organized the first canada france congress in science and mathematics since then, he has fostered a special relationship with Canada and with the University of Ottawa in particular. He has also served as Vice President of the International Centre for Pure and Applied Mathematics, an organization that promotes mathematics in developing countries. And he is currently into this organization's regional scientific officer for India and West Central Asia. This eminent scientist is known for his modesty and kind regard for his colleagues and his work has often been applauded by various national and international organizations. Most notably, he has been awarded the Albert Chatton Medal, the CNRS Silver Medal and the French Academy of Science Market Prize. He is also being named as a fellow of the Robert Bosch Foundation at Princeton University's Institute for Advanced Study and more recently was named an honorary fellow of the Hadi Ramanuja Society. He is the author of over 160 publications, including 10 books. Above all, Professor Michael Watsmith is a researcher who was driven to pursue the loftiest ideals. He is an accomplished runner who has completed several marathons and run the grueling Mott Blanac Ultra trial three times. His genius, his impressive ability to pass on his knowledge and his desire for achievement in all fields are sure to inspire our most recent graduates. And now, he'll be uh, giving his presentation and he'll be just sharing his own ideas on the so-called Fermat Pell equation. Now, I just welcome our professor for the second session for our international web conference on mathematics for material science, signals, images, and structured data 2020. Sir, it's over to you now. Thank you very much, Dr. Gita. It's a pleasure to, to be with you. And I, I wish to thank you warmly, first of all, for the idea of uh, starting this conference and uh, also for the kind word that uh, you, you had. I, I sent you a very short CV, but you expanded it uh, quite a lot. So it's very kind of you. And uh, I, I just attended the, the talk by uh, Mano, which was very informative. And uh, I understand that it is the middle of the night for her in Canada. But for me, it's only the early morning. So I am very glad to participate to, to this uh, uh, international web conference on mathematics for signals, images, and structured data. And uh, so I, I will speak on the Brahmagupta Fermat Pell equation. It is the equation x squared minus dy squared equal plus or minus one. So 
this is my abstract, but uh, I will start by uh, giving uh, some reference. Most often, uh, the lectures end with uh, some uh, uh, reference or, or biography, bibliography, but uh, I, I wish to start with uh, introducing the book by Manfred Schroeder. The book is a number theory in science and communication with application in cryptography, physics, digital information, computing, and cell similarity. Uh, Manfred Schroeder had his uh, thesis with, uh, 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 it was uh, the topic of his thesis was uh, the uh, uh, acoustic of concert hall. So something quite uh, concrete. And uh, for the study of this, he used, uh, uh, he, he used uh, what, what will be the main topic of uh, my talk, which, which is continued fraction algorithm. So his thesis advisor was Don Zaguier, a well-known mathematician, a pure mathematician, but uh, his uh, thesis, his PhD, was uh, something quite uh, applied using number theory. And I, I will start with an example, which is some electric network. Uh, you may know that uh, the resistance of a network in series is the sum of the resistances. So it is R1 plus R2. If you have a network in parallel with uh, the two resistances, which are R1 and R2, the resistance of the network is given by 1 over R equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So this is basic fact. And uh, using this, we can look at the network, which is the following one you put in parallel 1 over S1 and R plus 1 over S2. And you compute the resistance of the circuit. So the inverse of U is given by the sum of the inverse of S1 over S1, which is S1, plus the sum of R plus 1 over S2. So U is given by 1 divided by S1 plus 1 over R plus 1 over S2. We will uh, call this a continued fraction. It's a finite continued fraction. We write zero because uh, we do not have something be between uh, the fraction. Then S1, R, S2. So this is an example that we can expand. And we expand it as follows. We take this network. Here we, we put R0, R1, R2. And here in parallel, 1 over S1, 1 over S2, 1 over S3. So we look at the resistance of uh, this circuit. The, the, the main uh, part is R0. But then the second part is uh, S1, which is given by uh, this resistance here. And then R1 plus 1 over S2 plus R2 plus 1 over S3. So this gives this continued fraction, this value. And for this value, we will use the notation which is R0, S1, R1, S2, R2. So these uh, numbers here, because they are just numbers for us, uh, correspond to the numbers which are given here. So this is just uh, an, an example, but it turns out that uh, this uh, network, electron, electric networks and the continued fraction have been used to find the first solution to the problem of decomposing an integer square into a disjoint union of integer squares all of which are distinct. And uh, uh, this uh, more explanation are given in the book of uh, Manfred Schroeder. But uh, I give you one example of uh, what I call squaring the square, because it's uh, uh, analog to squaring the circle. And squaring the circle has been solved. The smallest solution is given by a perfect square. And there are 21 small squares, all of possible order. And the length, total length here is 112. So you have 112 here, 112 here. And uh, you, if you look at uh, this, this is a tessellation. It's uh, just uh, you, you decompose the big square into uh, 21 small square. And the total length is 112. OK, this is just an introduction. And uh, now I will speak on continued fraction by speaking of uh, an example, which is a puzzle, which was uh, proposed by Mahala Nobis to Ramanujan. So uh, the story is about a street in the town of Louvain, Belgium. I have been to this town and I never saw such a street, but it, it is just the story. The houses are numbered consecutively. 
Well, most often the houses are numbers uh, with even order on, on the on one side and and left uh, on the left hand side it is odd, but uh, this is just the story. One of the house numbers had the peculiar property that the total number, the total of the numbers lower than it, was exactly equal to the total of the numbers above it. And the mysterious house number was greater than 50, but less than 500. So it is said you can get uh, some more information on these websites. You know what, what means uh, HTTP and HTTPS, thanks to the talk of uh, Mano. Uh, you, you can get more information on, on this puzzle. And uh, it is said that uh, Ramanujan immediately took a sheet of paper, wrote a few things, and then found the solution very fast. So we, I will give you the solution. I first forget about uh, the requirement that the house number is between 50 and 500. I just forget about that and I look at the examples. Let me take uh, the example of a street with eight houses and you look at the house number six. On one side you have one plus two plus three plus five plus four plus five which is 15. On the other side you have seven plus eight which is 15. So the total is the same on both sides. My second example is a house number 35 in a suite with 49 houses. So we have to compute on one side, one plus two plus three plus 34. You probably know, but uh, I can tell you that to do that, we write the same number backwards. And then we had, we have one plus 34, two plus 33, three plus 35. So 30 times time, 34 times we have 35. So two S, is 34 times 35 and so the total of the sum is given by 34 times 35 divided by 2 which is 595. On the other side to compute the sum 36 plus 49 we just repeat the process we compute the sum from 1 to 49 which is 49 times 50 divided by 2 but we remove the sum from 1 to 35 which is 35 times 36 divided by 2, and the result is the same as before. So this is a good solution. And you will see that these are the two smallest solutions. Well, the smallest solution depends a little bit. Uh, I, I wish to get, give you two other solutions. We may look like trivial, but are, one of them is really trivial and not the other one. If you take a street with one house, uh, there is just the number one. There is no house on the left, no house on the right. So the sum is zero and it is the same. But there is even a more trivial example. You have a street with no house and so the house number is zero and uh, it is the sum of the empty set which is zero. And uh, this is reminiscent to the question of uh, Ramanujan to his teacher. If no banana is distributed to no student, will each student get a banana? And uh, so uh, we, we have the two more or less trivial solution. We have two larger ones, but the puzzle requests the house number to be between 50 and 500. So let us look at uh, this problem and try to solve it. We consider the number of houses, which is N, and the house number, which is M. So the requirement is that the sum on the one side, which is one plus three plus M minus one, is the same as the sum on the other side, which is M plus one plus M plus two plus N. I told you how to compute these numbers. On the left hand side, you have N times M minus one over two. On the right hand side, you have N times N plus one over two, which is the sum from one to N. And you subtract the sum from one to M, which is M, M plus one over two. So you just simplify this. And you find that uh, this gives two n square equal n times n plus one. On the right hand side, you have a quadratic form, as we say, a polynomial of degree two in n. We complete the square. And for that, we multiply by four. And when we have four n times n plus one, we can write it as two n plus one square minus one. And therefore, uh, we have to solve the equation x square minus two y square equal one. X Given this, such an equation, x will be odd. And it's not difficult, it's a small exercise to see that y should be m, sh should be even. 
why should be even so uh, to solve this equation or to solve this puzzle is equivalent now uh, of course uh, ramanujan found uh, this equation x square minus 2y square equal 1 immediately and uh, he knew this equation and he said that he has infinitely many solutions and there is a single one between 50 and 500 and the sequence of solution is known the solution say that they are the number of the house the solution which was found by Raman Jean is 204 you see we had the solution 0 1 6 35 the next one is 204 and the one after 1189 is more than 500 so there is one solution which is below 500. And the number of the houses, which correspond to this, is 288. It's not clear whether Ramanujan knew that, but uh, there is a very simple way to find this sequence. This is a so-called linear recurrent sequence, which means that the uh, 204 is 6 times 35 minus 6. And this is the general rule. This number here is six times this one minus the one before. I give here some HTTPS, uh, some URL links. And uh, this is to the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. So uh, now you know that uh, this is a database. And on this database, there are a lot of sequences. And if you have a sequence, and if you want to know more about a finite sequence of uh, numbers you just uh, go to this web page and you will get a lot of hits which will give you some information and uh, hopefully it will give you the next uh, integer if you are looking for it this uh, kind of equation x square minus 2y square equal 1 was known for a long time in particular by brahma gupta who studied the equation x square minus 92y square equal 1 and he found the smallest solution. And the smallest solution, the smallest x or the smallest y, it is the same, is given by x equal 1,151. He used what is called the Brahmagupta identity, which is that if you have a product of two integers, which are of the form x square minus dy square, the product is again a square minus d times another square. And he used something very original, which is the composition method, which was developed by Bhaskaratu much later, who studied the difficult equation x square minus 61 y square equal 1. And it's quite an achievement. He found the smallest solution. And you see that the four smallest solution has a y, which is 226 million and something. So it's really huge. And he used the method of Brahmagupta to produce a solution of this equation, x squared minus 61 y squared equal 1. But uh, with instead of equal 1, he found equal k for a small value of k. He found several solutions. And combining them, he found the, the solution, which is here. It's really amazing. There is another, so this was in the 12th century. There is another uh, work on a similar problem, which was in the 14th century, which was by Narayana. Uh, I write Tom, Tom Johnson, who is a composer who wrote some music using uh, some, uh, uh, so, some question which was asked by Narayana, which is reminiscent of uh, Fibonacci numbers. But uh, here we are looking at the equation x squared minus 100 and three y square equal one. And uh, Narayana found the smallest solution, which has x equal 227,528. So these are work of uh, uh, Indian mathematicians. And there is a, a nice book by André Veil, Number Theory, An Approach Through History, uh, which in includes a lot of information about uh, this work. This equation, is called the Pell equation. Uh, instead of equal one, we will uh, consider the equation with equal plus or minus one. The minus one is also interesting. So it is often said that Euler mistakenly attributed Brankner's work to, uh, of, on this equation to Pell. 
so because of that, I added the name of Brahmagupta and the Ferma. However, the equation appears in the book by Han, which was certainly written with Pell's help. Some say entirely written by Pell. Perhaps Euler knew what he was doing in naming this equation. So this name of Ran is Johann Ram, who was a Swiss mathematician who was the first to introduce this, this symbol for the division. So the history of this equation starts with some correspondence from Pierre de Fermat to Brankner, and also a letter from Fermat to Frenicle de Bessy. Uh, so uh, I give some, some URL, which is the math history, which uh, includes a lot of information on history of mathematics. Euler worked a lot on this equation, and Euler worked also on continued fraction. And the complete theory of this equation was worked out by Lagrange. I will come back to Lagrange a little bit later. So what is the solution? What is the theory? I, I will not uh, give the proof of the result, but uh, I just state the result, which is a very nice uh, result, which is not so difficult. It involves some mathematics, which is uh, some interesting mathematics, but I just state the result. You take an integer d, which is not a square, otherwise the situation is completely different, and which is positive. If d is negative, uh, the equation is uh, easy to solve. So d is a positive integer, not a square. So in this case, the equation x square minus d y square equal plus or minus one has infinitely many non-negative solutions in integer x y. So there are infinitely many solutions. One of them is the smallest, either smallest x or smallest y. It is the same. And positive x one x y one are positive and are the smallest solution to the equation. Once you get the smallest positive equation you get all the non-negative equation as follows. You write x1 plus y1 square root of d. You take a power nu, where nu is a non-negative integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. You expand that. Whenever you see square root of d square, you write d. And so when you expand that, you have an integer plus an integer times square root of d. This x nu and y nu will give you oh, all the non-negative solutions. I say non-negative, I do not say positive because this includes nu equals zero, which gives the trivial solution one, zero. And the other solution with nu greater than or equal to one are positive. So I took the non-negative solutions. We could ask all the solution positive or negative or zero. Then we get the complete solutions, set of solutions, by taking nu, which is positive or negative, and also by taking the sign plus or minus. In terms of algebra, they form a group, which is the, a group which is called of rank one. There is one copy of z, and then the, what is called the torsion part, which is plus or minus one, which is this one. And nu corresponds to z. The fact that we have a group has some geometric explanation. On a conic, the curve x square minus dy square equal 1 is a conic. There is a group law which can be described geometrically. If you heard about uh, elliptic curves, elliptic curves are curves of genus 1, and uh, conics are curves of genus 0. But they share some properties. In particular, the group law on a conic is something very elementary, and uh, it is done like this. You take the conic, here it's a circle, but it can be uh, some hyperbola or parabola. You take a conic, you take two points A and B, and you want to know what is the sum A plus B for the group law, and you draw the line which goes to zero, to, you choose one point, the origin, and uh, then you take this line and you have the uh, sum for this law, a plus b, as the intersection point of the line which is parallel to a b with the circle. So, uh, this is the this group that we have here is a, is a subgroup of uh, the group on the point, the group of real points. So let me come back to the puzzle of uh, Mahalanobis to Ramanujan. 
The puzzle was about the equation x square minus two y square equal one, and uh, the solution for the house number and the number of uh, uh, houses is given by x equal two n plus one and y equal two n. There is an easy fundamental solution which is three two. This is the smallest solution with equal plus one. It's nine minus eight equal one. So you see that uh, this solution, which uh, uh, is a three two correspond to n equal n equal one. So it is the street with one house and the number of the house is one. But uh, in terms of the equation x square minus two y square equal one, it is not the trivial solution, it is the fundamental solution. The trivial solution is the, the street. Ah, is that some question or something? No? Everything is being fine? I can continue? Okay, so I come back to my yeah. So we, we have the trivial solution, which is the street with no house, and which is x equal one, y equal zero. We have the fundamental solution, which is the street with one house, and x is three and y is two. And then we take the exponent two. So we expand three plus two square root of two square. We find 17 plus 12 square root of two. This gives x equal 17, y equal 12. And so this gives the third solution, non-trivial solution or positive solution that I give to the uh, puzzle. If you take the cube of 3 plus 2 square root of 2, you get 99 plus 70 times square root of 2. And th this gives the second solution. And now if you want uh, the solution to the puzzle, you take mu equal 4. But uh, certainly, this is not the way that uh, Ramanujan used to solve the puzzle. I will come back to that. I prefer to use plus or minus one in such a way that I have a group. And with this group, uh, it's not only to have a group, it's more general to have plus or minus one. Uh, if the fundamental solution produces the plus sign, then the equation has no solution. If the fundamental solution produces the minus sign, then the fundamental solution of the equation with the plus side is obtained by taking the square of the fundamental solution with the minus side. And so we have the fundamental solution, which is given by this. And if you want to solve the solution with one, you take new even. If you want the solution with minus one, you take new other. Let me give an example to explain that. Look at the equation x square minus two y square equal minus one now. The fundamental solution is one, one. You have one minus two equal minus one. If you want the fundamental solution with a plus sign, you take the square of one plus square root of two. And this is what we have we, we found. The fundamental solution to x square minus two y square equal one is three two, which is given by one plus square. Now the positive solutions are obtained by writing one plus root of two to the new, where new is odd, and the positive solution of the equation with plus one are given with new even. But you see, new even means that uh, it is a power of three plus three root of two. So this is what we have seen before. Now, uh, all the problem is to find the fundamental solution. I told you there is a fundamental solution, but uh, how to find it? And we have seen that it may be a very large solution. So I explain you the idea. We will have the continued traction. So I think someone has his mic microphone on. Okay. So the idea is for me. Assume that uh, x and y are two integers, positive integers such so that x square minus dy square equal one. So usually x and y will be rather large. So you see that this means that the x square will be very close to dy square. It means that the rational number x over y will be very close to square root of d. By the way, we insisted that the d is not a square. And I did not say whether it is not a square of an integer or a square of a rational number because it is the same. It's an exercise that uh, if d is the square of the rational number, then d is the square of an integer. So we assume that square root of d is not a rational number. 
but it is very close to x over y because the denominator here will be large and so this number here will be very small so the solution will give rise to a good rational approximation rational means that the x over y is a rational number approximation means that the difference will be very small but now there is an algorithm a process for finding the best rational approximation of a real number and this is given by continued fraction so this is why continued fraction will help us to solve this Pell equation what is this algorithm i explained it with the resistances earlier but uh, i go back to the mathematics we perform the euclidean division of x by one x is an integer plus a remainder the integer is denoted by this kind of bracket lower bracket and the fractional part the part which is between zero and one with the, this uh, bracket here so this fractional part is non-negative and it is less than one if x is an integer then the algorithm is just to write that x is equal to the integer part and this is the end if x is not an integer then this number here is not zero so what we do is that we take the inverse of this number so this, the inverse of this number is greater than one and we have written x as a, an integer plus one of the, the number which is greater than one the real number now what we did with x we repeat it with x1 if x1 is an integer we are we finished and if x1 is not an integer then we write x2 equal one of the, the fractional part of x1 and we have this uh, start of the continued fraction so we get like this some integers a0 a1 a2 and it's an exercise that the, the algorithm stops after finitely many steps if and only if x is a rational number this is just the fact that the euclidean division stops after finitely many steps for positive integers so we will use this notation as well as i explained before a0 a1 a2 are positive integers well a0 may be uh, negative or zero but a1 a2 are positive and so this is the notation for the continued fraction so in this the notation here means just this fraction here. just a small remark is that uh, if the fraction is finite we stop at ak if ak is equal to is at least two we have another expansion with ak minus one and one because ak minus one plus one over one gives ak we can explain this in the geometric way we start with a rectangle where the sides are one and x i will say that the proportion is x we split the rectangle into squares beside one and the smaller rectangle or side between zero and one so this is what we do for example if x is between two and three we have two squares and a rectangle and we cannot remove a rectangle of side one here so what we did with the first square we repeat it with the dark blue one so this one has the side the, the big one is x this is x minus two because uh, x is between two and three and we split this one into squares and uh, the size of the square will be the fractional part of x and then we repeat we have a number of uh, so the first number is a1 uh, a0 and then we have a number of uh, squares which is a1 and then we continue with the smaller rectangle so the small rectangle has a side length in proportion x1 and this pro produces the continued fraction extension of x the sequence a0 a1 is given by the number of squares at each step i will take two precise examples concrete example the first one with the golden ratio the golden ratio one plus root of five over two satisfies phi equal one plus one over five so if we if we start with a rectangle having the golden ratio as a proportion we have one square uh -huh. and then another small rectangle with a side which are the, in the same proportion so we have a first square where the first rectangle had the length phi the next one the next rectangle has the 
proportion five, so one side is one and the other is one of the five. The next one, again, has the proportion five, so the, the size here is one of the five square and the size here is one of the five. And it continues like this. So we shrink by the, the coefficient, we multiply by one of the five. If we do it with the one plus square root of two, then it's uh, very similar, which means that uh, we first remove two squares because uh, one plus square root of two is between two and three. And then we have a rectangle which has the same proportion, one plus square root of two. So uh, we, at each step, we remove two squares. And this is related to the fact that one plus square root of two has the continued fraction two to two, only two, so it's a period. This gives a, a proof of irrationality. Uh, uh, a number is rational if and only if the uh, continuous fraction expansion is finite. And this is because if you split into squares, if you start with a rectangle where the sides are uh, integers, positive integers, then you get a decreasing sequence of positive integers, so it is finite. So this gives the irrationality of the phi, so square root of phi, and square root of two. Now I come back to my problem, which is the Diophantine approximation. You start with the real number, which has the continued fraction expansion, a0, a1, a2, a k, and you truncate this the continued fraction after some step, say a k. So you have a finite continued fraction now. This is a rational number. The rational number is 0 plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus 1 over ak. So you just compute it and it is a rational number. You call it p, p k over q k. The fact, the theory tells us that uh, this rational number is very close to x. And moreover, this approximation is best possible in the terms of the quality of the approximation compared with the size of the denominator. So if you want to have a good approximation to a real number, you compute the continued fraction and you truncate the continued fraction. Now, uh, in my case, this number x is not any number, it's the square root of the positive integer d, which is not a square. And it turns out that the continued fraction has some several uh, very peculiar properties. The first one is that it is periodic, which means that uh, you have a0, a1, a2, ak, but then after the ak, you have a1, a2, ak, a1, a2, ak, so it repeats, you have a period. So this is what it means by this bar. It's an infinite continued fraction, but periodic, ultimately periodic, periodic after the a0, just after the a0. Next, the ak, which is here, is two times a zero. The next property, which uh, is not so easy to, to, to prove, but uh, uh, the, the proof is, is uh, an exercise in number theory in the uh, university. Uh, this a k is two times a zero, and of course a zero is the square, is the integer part of square root of d. This is the, just from the definition of the continuous fraction. And finally, uh, there is a property that if you stop before a k, you look at a1, a2, a k minus 1, it is a palindrome, which, which means that uh, you can read it in the opposite direction. a k minus 1 is a1, a k minus 2 is a2. You, we will see example. And so the, the main point is that the number a0, a1, a k minus 1 is a good approximation to square root of d. So, uh, one question which we addressed was to know whether we find minus one for the fundamental solution or not. And the answer is the following. If k is even, the fundamental solution of the equation x squared minus dy squared equal one is given by the fraction a0, a1, a k minus one, where k is the period. So it's the smallest integer so that uh, a k is equal to two a0. So this is the case where k is even. If k is odd, the fundamental solution to the equation with minus one is given by the, this fraction. So if you stop at before a k, you get the value minus one for x squared minus dy squared. And the fundamental solution of the equation with plus one is given by repeating 
a0, a1, ak minus 1, ak, a1, a2, ak minus 1. So you just uh, repeat the same. This, you, you include ak and you repeat it and you get x2 over x, uh, y2. So in fact, you get all the solutions by repeating nu minus 1 times a1, ak, and then you write a1, ak minus 1. Like here, we repeat it uh, once and then uh, we with ak and one we, without ak. Okay, so this may be a little bit complicated, but uh, now I come to examples. I start with the uh, one which was interesting for us, which was x squared minus two y squared equal plus or minus one. Solutions to this equation occur already in the element of Euclid, where he found the solution, uh, which is uh, 17 squared minus two, 12 squared equal one, with seven, 99 and 70, and these numbers here. So these are the solution of the puzzle uh, of Malanobis. You see, this uh, correspond to uh, the solution, which are, uh, so 12 is two times six, and six was the house number. And this is two times 35, 35 was the house number. And now we have the true solution to the puzzle, which is uh, 204, and twice 204 is 408. So this, in fact, the, the solution of the puzzle was already in the element of Euclid. This equation occurs also in uh, some question by Pythagoras of Samos. He asked which are the right angle triangles with integer sides such that the two sides of the right angle are consecutive integers. So we ask that x, y, z are integers, and we ask that y is x plus 1. So the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared is the equation of uh, Pythagoras, and uh, y equals x plus 1 is, is another requirement. So you reply, replace y by this value in this equation. This is what you find here. And so uh, you complete the square. So you multiply by 2, and you have 2x plus 1 square minus 2z square equal minus 1. You multiply by two and you had the plus one here, so it gives minus one. And so this is the equation x squared minus two y squared equal minus one. So uh, if uh, I look at the receipt which I gave you, how to find all the solutions? You write square root of two, you look at the continuous fraction expansion. For this, you write this equation and you find that the continuous fraction expansion is one and two, which, which is repeated, so the period is only two. So the period is odd, the, the length of the period is odd, you have just one element here. And so you the fundamental solution will give minus one, it is given by x equal one and y equal one, and it is one minus two equal minus one. Maybe this is not so illuminating because it is too short. If you look at uh, x square minus two y square equal one, the fundamental solution, so not the trivial solution, is given by the continued fraction 1, 2, 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 3 over 2. And if uh, you want to look at the next equation, uh, you take the square of x1 plus y1 square root of 2, and you get the continued fraction expansion 1, 2, 2, 2, as I explained. So this is 17 over 12, and it gives you x and y. The third solution is obtained by taking this continuous fraction expansion, but now you take five values. You have to take a, a, odd, a, a, a odd number of twos, and then you get the sequence of solution. If you take an even number of twos, you get minus one. So you get the next solution, 99 over 70. And so now you can complete the puzzle of Mal Nobis, and this is probably the way that uh, Ramanujan did. You have to write the continued fraction expansion, so you have all these seven twos, and then you get uh, this rational number. And the solution of the puzzle is the house number is 204 in a street with 288 houses. And as usual, it's good to check that the solution is the correct one, which I did. OK, so this was x squared minus 2y squared. Let us look at the equation with 3 instead of 2. You write 3. You want to write the continuous fraction of square root of 3. How do you do that? You can 
you're right. Square root of three plus one equal two, because uh, this is between two and three, plus one of an integer. This integer, it is between one and two. So you write it one plus one of an integer. And this integer, if you work out the, the process, you will find that it is square root of three plus one. So this square root of three plus one, you replace it by all these formula. And you continue and you get that uh, it is periodic, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on. So this is the continuous fraction of square root of three. Now the fundamental solution is obtained by taking just one, 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 one. So it gives one plus one over one, which is two over one. So there is no solution to the equation x squared minus three y squared equal minus one because the period of the continuous fraction is even, uh, even length. The length is two, you have two elements. So there is no solution to this equation. Okay, you can continue and get the small values of d. I did it for d equal two, and I got a solution with minus one. For d equal three, I get a solution with one. And this is the result for five. You have a solution with minus one, because the period length uh, is uh, odd here. It's, you have just one element here. Here you have one, here you have two elements. For six, you have a period length which is even. So the solution is one, no solution with minus one. And also for seven, and you have here what is called the fundamental solutions. So the length of the period length is four. And so no solution with minus one for d equals seven. I told you about the Brahmagupta's problem. For solving this equation, x squared minus 92 y squared equal one, you write the continued fraction expansion of 92. You see that uh, it starts with nine. The last ak is twice the first one, it's 18. If you look at uh, this uh, value here, this uh, string, it is a palindrome. You have one, one, two, four, two, one, one, and here one, one, two, four, two, one, one. So it's a palindrome. Uh, you can read it in the backwards. And then uh, you look at the period length. You see that uh, here you have a four in the middle. It is not repeated. So because of that, the period length is even. And if you stop before the 18, it is odd because you have something in the middle. But if you include the 18, it is even. And so there is no solution with minus one. And the first solution is obtained by removing the 18 and taking this continued fraction. So you compute it and you find 1151 divided by 120. And you see that uh, you get the solution rather easily. It is not so complicated to, comp to, to, to find the value of uh, this number here, of this uh, continued fraction. And of course, you check that uh, this is correct. I mentioned Narayana. Narayana had the number 103. And so you write the continued fraction of uh, square root of 103. It starts with 10. You have a period. At the end of the period, you have 20. And if you look at uh, this string here, it is a palindrome. 6121191216. And in the middle, you have six. So the length of the period is even. There is no solution with minus one. And you get the solution with uh, plus one by stopping before 20. And you get this number, which is here. Maybe I should insist that uh, Brahmagupta, Narayana, Bhaskara did not use exactly continued fraction. They use something which is uh, related to continued fraction. But in the book of uh, uh, André Veil that I mentioned, you, you get uh, some information about the connection between the Chakravala method and uh, the continued fraction expansion. Now, let us look at uh, the equation of Bhaskara. It's with d equals 61. It's very interesting because the period is rather long. And you see that uh, here you have two which is repeated. So the length of the period is odd. So now we have a solution with minus one. And to get the solution with minus one, we remove the 14 and we take this continued fraction. And this continued fraction gives you this number with a numerator, which is 29,718. And it gives a solution with minus one. But the question was with plus one. 
And for the question with plus one, you can either use uh, the first uh, solution and take the square of uh, x minus uh, uh, plus uh, y square root of d, but you can also write this continuous fraction, you, this one, so you write 1, 4 up to 14, and then you repeat 1, 4, 3 up to 1. And when you do that, you get this very large number. It's not so complicated to, comp to, to, to find the, the value of this, but you see that it gives uh, some very large number. The denominator is 22, uh, 226 million and something. Uh, Fermat wrote to Bruckner and he used to uh, challenge Bruckner and he told him, would you be able to solve the equation x square minus d square equal one? And he said, oh, I will give you two values which are not too large in such a way that it's not too difficult. And the values that he gave are 61 and 109, but uh, Fermat chose these values because the solutions are very large. For d equals 61, the solution is the one that we just saw before, but for 109, the solution is a very large number. In, in fact, you see that this number, which gives the fundamental solution, can be written in a rather short way as uh, six power. So in spite of the fact that the numbers are large, you can write it in a rather condensed way. And I, I will come back to the fact that uh, some large numbers can be written with rather short, small symbols. Adrien Marie Legendre listed the fundamental solution for d between 2 and 109. And I put these two pictures because for some time it was believed that this is the picture of Adrien Marie Legendre but it was found, and there is a paper by Peter Duren, which is very interesting, uh, the mistaken portrait of Legendre. It was found that uh, this is not the mathematician, this is a, a, a participant of the French Revolution, so a politician man, Louis Legendre, and the only portrait of Adrien Maldry Legendre is a caricature, which is uh, given here, and uh, which is a caricature together with uh, Fourier. So if you want to send some uh, greeting cards uh, at the end of the year, you can uh, puzzle your friends and ask them to solve the solution x squared minus dy squared equal one. And I give here the solution for the next uh, years, two, uh, 2021, 22, 23. It turns out that uh, 2025 is just a perfect square. So there is no uh, uh, solution to the Pell equation in this case, but you have here the, the solution and the continued fraction expansion. The, the one in the 2021 is uh, 45,000 uh, for X. And so it's not so easy to find if you do not know the receipt. But uh, you see that uh, this period here uh, is, uh, uh, you have the palindrome here and uh, you have uh, 44 and 88, as I explained before. I will finish by uh, speaking of the so-called Archimedes cattle problem. So, uh, I don't know exactly how long time, how much I, I, I can speak uh, now, but uh, maybe I should stop uh, rather, rather soon. I can continue. Hello, Dr. Gita. I can continue. It's, uh, it's time now, it's 9 a.m., but uh, I hope. Yeah. Hello, I can how, how long do, do I have? Sir. Yes. I how long do I have? Have more. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So I I will do that. By the way, on the last slide, you will see my uh, URL of my website, and uh, you can look there, and you will find my email address, and so you can download uh, also the the file from my website. So all this is on my website. I put the last version yesterday. So the cattle problem of uh, Archimedes is a problem about a herd of cattle with bulls and cows. Some of them are white, other are black, other are spotted, and other are brown. So I, I will not uh, tell you too much about that, but you see that the problem can be written in a rather uh, easy way with some numbers, which is uh, one half and uh, one third, one fifth and uh, one quarter and so on. So I go immediately to the equation. You, you, you have a, a herd with bulls 
white, black, brown, and spotted. And there are some conditions on this, uh, the number of each of them. And this set of equation is a set of equation in four variables. And there are th uh, three equations. You have equal, equal, equal. So you have three equations. So three equations in four variables means it's homogeneous. It means that uh, there is a fundamental solution and all the other solutions are multiple of this one. So the basic solution is given by these values, which are not so large, you see, to 2004 for the number of uh, white bulbs. But the, the problem is not over. We have to uh, find some other condition on this. So the solution will be a uh, multiple of this. The next uh, conditions are on the number of cows of white, of uh, black, spotted, and brown. And what is the composition of the herd? So we, we have the cows and we add four equations. But again, it's homogeneous. And so it means that uh, we again have uh, multiple of the fundamental solution. And the multiple has to be a product of 4,657 by some integer. So we have to find what is this k, which is here. This is the only unknown so far. So we have infinitely many solutions. And Archimedes says, OK, it's very good if you did it, but this is not the, the end. And the next condition are if you put some of the birds and, uh, uh, in, together, they form a square. This is what is mean, meant here. And if you put them in another way, you find a triangular figure. So what it means? It means that b plus n is a square, t plus x is a triangular number, and the triangular number is a number of the form m, m plus 1 over 2. So if you look uh, at this equation, you find that uh, this number here should be a square. And if you write this square, I go a little bit fast, but uh, I want to go to the equation now. And the equation is v square minus du square equal 1. We are looking to two integers v and u and uh, d we compute it and we find this value of d it is d square times four million and something so this is the value of d and we have to solve the equation a v square minus d u square equal one so you, you have seen that even for d equals 61 we had some large values for x and y but now d is very large there are a lot of uh, digits in d and so uh, the end of the problem is to say that uh, uh, this is uh, very good if you are able to solve this problem. So this was a letter from Archimedes to Eratosthenes. And uh, this uh, letter was uh, found in the library Herzog August in the Wolfenbüttel uh, in 1773. Uh, so this, in the Odyssey of Homer, we find the sun god heard. And so these uh, people in the Greek, in ancient Greek uh, had the use to, to large numbers. It's interesting that uh, the solution of Pell equation was found by Lagrange and published in 7, uh, 1773. And this uh, manuscript of uh, the bovinum problem, as it is said, was for, found in the, exactly the same year. And well, yeah, the publication in Wolfenbüttel was, was done exactly the same year. So the first attempt to solve the problem was done by Meyer in 1867. I will tell you a little bit, but uh, he failed. He did not succeed to, to go to the end. Amtor found the smallest solution. He said that it has 206,545 uh, digits, which is correct. He said that it started with 776 and some other digits. Only the 776 is correct. But uh, we can say that Amdor essentially solved the problem, even if there was a small mistake. Uh, Bell computed the first 30 and the last 12 decimal digits, and he needed four years of computation. It was before the computers. It was uh, in the 19th century. In the New York Times, it was published in 1931 that uh, it has been calculated that it would take the work of a thousand men for a thousand years to determine the complete number of cattle, it is obvious that the world will never have a complete solution. So in mathematics, we are used when we see it is obvious that 
to have some doubt about it. And it is not so obvious because I will show you the complete solution. The complete solution was published by William German and Zardke. Another solution was given by Nelson. And I will speak of two papers by Vardy and Lenstra, which are quite interesting about this uh, cattle problem. The solution of this equation has a printout which was done by Nelson. The number of digits was found, uh, as I mentioned before, and there are 47 pages. The solution is the following. You start with these numbers, you have some stars, you have the middle, which is here, you have some stars, and you have the end. And each of the stars, the, there are 12 stars, and they represent 17,210 digits. So you see, it's a huge number. But uh, I mentioned before that uh, when you have a large number, maybe you can write it with few digits. A, a number with, written with only three digits can have near, nearly 370 million decimal digits. You see, this number, 9 power 9 power 9, at this value, if you take 10 to the 10 to the 10, the number of decimal digits is 10 to the 10 plus 1. So even with few digits, you can write some very large numbers. And this is what did uh, Ilan Vardy. This is the solution of the Archimedes cattle problem. You see that there are very few symbols. Uh, there is a square root, there is a power, and there is an integer part. So you can see the complete solution. A simple solution was given by uh, Nigren, a simple solution to Archimedes cattle problem. And a very nice uh, paper on this topic is, is due to Lenstra solving the Pell equation. And uh, the Lenstra gives not only the smallest solution, but all the solutions. They depend on the parameter. There are infinitely many of them. And they are given by a formula, which is a close formula, and uh, which is quite nice, because you have a complete set of the solution. So how did uh, these people uh, found the solution? What you need is to compute the continuous fraction of this uh, number here. Meyer did it by hand. He did 240 steps of the algorithm. And then he gave up. He knew that it, he was on the right way, but he gave up. And it's better that he gave up because we know that the length of the period now is uh, 1,000 uh, 1, times more than what he did. So he took probably several years to do 240 steps, but uh, he was very far from the truth. So what Amtor did, and uh, Lenstra explained it uh, very well, is that the number that we have to compute the square root of is a square times uh, uh, a number which has no, uh, no uh, square factor. So we take this number, which is uh, square free, as we say, and the length of the period is only 92. So you see, with this, the mayor could have done it because it is 240. And this gives only a solution with the number d prime. But then, once we have uh, the solution with d prime, there is a way to find the solution to the equation itself. So the size of the fundamental solution of the equation x squared minus dy squared equal plus or minus 1 may be small, but may be very large. And uh, because it may be very large, it gives some uh, uh, very interesting uh, compu computational problem. And uh, I will end by just mentioning one open problem, which is to find a good algorithm to decide whether the equation with minus one has a solution or not. The only way we know to uh, deduce whether the solution exists with minus one is to compute the continued fraction expansion. If I give you a large number, uh, I do not know another way to say whether the solution with minus one will uh, exist or not. And this is quite a challenging problem. So with that, I will uh, thank you for listening to my talk. And I welcome the questions. If you have some questions, please uh, tell me. Thank you, Professor. And we are participants. Any queries, you can just raise to Professor. And now he is available for the discussion. Okay, Professor, and uh, your uh, speak or uh, talk on formatical equation was very interesting, impressive, amazing, and it was a fascinating one. 
and uh, we thank you a lot for coming over here and spending your valuable time sharing your knowledge amongst us and i thank you once again professor please uh, keep in touch with us and whenever we just require anything else from you please guide us please help out us sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you i appreciate it. i i like to to give this lecture thank you bye bye thank you so much sir Dear participants, please, within two, two or three minutes, we'll be just having a presentation. Just stay back with us.